Hello and welcome, Valyeth here, and today we'll be talking about Holy Paladins in Season 3. In this guide we'll be discussing the significant 10.2 changes to the class, our strengths and weaknesses, important talents, stat priority, Season 3 tier, as well as our playstyle, rotation, and core abilities. Ever since the 10.1.5 Holy Paladin rework, we have been the recipients of nerfs after nerfs after nerfs. In coming into Season 3, we got the hammer once again. However, contrary to so many doom and gloomers out there talking shit, Holy Paladin is actually in quite a good place right now. In 10.1.5, we were overtuned to no end, and we deserved to be nerfed to come back in line with the rest of the healers. But even with all these nerfs, we still maintain a top spot in both competitive rating as well as the highest end of Mythic Plus. In my opinion, there is no world where the race for world first guilds don't bring a Holy Paladin and our throughput, utility, and survivability in keys is still top of class. Here are all the final changes to Holy Paladins coming in Season 3. Some of these are more important than others in my opinion as they impact our gameplay in one way or another. As you can see, all of our single target spells have been buffed, especially Holy Light, Flash of Light, and Word of Glory. These changes have brought back that caster Holy Paladin playstyle into the fold to be potentially viable to play again. Now, I don't think there was very many people really asking for the Kassadin to make a reappearance, but for those out there that prefer it, you now have the potential throughput to make it viable in keys. How high you can go with it, I'm not entirely sure, as the standard Holy Shock playstyle will still reign supreme in Season 3. However, even as a Shockadin, there will be times where you will want to or need to cast Flash of Light or Holy Light. All of the other changes made to the class won't particularly change our playstyle all that much, and are focused more so on tapering back our healing and our damage output. You will notice a difference when you hop on your tune and run your first key in Season 3. Your healing will be lower than you expect it to be, and your damage will be nowhere near what it used to be. But don't get me wrong, we are still able to dish out a significant amount of healing, but we have to be much more mindful of when and how we use our various CDs to make sure we get the most out of them when we use them. Where we once used spells for damage, we may need to consider using them for healing instead. A well-placed Holy Prism in Season 2 was enough to heal an entire group almost up to full. This is no longer the case, and you may need to expend more global cooldowns healing to bring your party back to where they need to be. I actually don't mind this change, as we have been brought back to the core of our role a bit more than I have felt in a long time. We will need to heal, and not just throw a spell here and there and then go back to DPSing, but we will actually have to dedicate time towards healing our group in order to survive. So what strengths do we possess in order to navigate the next season of M+. Well, we have a great group-wide passive damage reduction in Devotion Aura, which reduces all damage taken by 3%. This should always be used in all PvE content. An incredible utility kit with our various blessings, and especially blessing a sack. This is still a fantastic ability to use even after the nerfs in 10.2, and should be used on CD in keys when the tank goes in for large packs. We have several ways to help CC and interrupt enemies. Blinding Light, Hammer Justice, and our interrupt should be used as much as possible to help the group out. Strong spot healing from practically everything we have. The buffs to Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Word of Glory are all welcome changes, and especially Word of Glory. Our Holy Power Spenders have been very weak, but Word of Glory actually feels like it's doing something now. If managed correctly, we should have a CD available at all time to help with most damage profiles. We also possess an adequate damage output via our new tier set, as well as our burst damage with Blessing of Summer. But we also have some areas we are not so great at, and we need to be mindful of these as well. We are a melee healer which is innately more difficult to play. It is not as bad as Mistweaver Monks who basically have to hump a boss's leg in order to actually hit them. We can still generate Holy Power and dish out healing at a distance, and thanks to the aforementioned changes to Flash Light and Holy Light, we can do so even better now. We also have really bad mobility, with our Horse Buddy the only real mobility ability we have available. Both a weakness and a strength in my opinion is our dependence on CDs. For the novice healer, this can be very daunting and difficult to manage around, but once figured out, our CD kit is one of our greatest strengths. Now let's move on to our talent build. Because of the changes to Flash of Light and Holy Light, we will be running somewhat of a hybrid build this season. We will be casting Flash of Light and Holy Light a lot for spot healing, so it's important that we buff those spells as much as possible while still maintaining our core talent build. This is the talent build I've come up with so far. There are still many choices players can make that are different than this, but this one seemed to achieve all the things I wanted it to do. 
The first change is to pick up Moment of Passion instead of Resplendent Light. This causes your Flash and Holy Light to heal for an additional 15% on targets with your beacon. We drop out of Overflowing Light from row 6. Now row 7 is where most of the changes come in. We pick up Divine Revelations, which makes your Holy Light or Flash of Light do 20% more healing while empowered by Infusion of Light. We also pick up Tower Radiance, which grants you one Holy Power after using Flash of Light. In row 8, we pick up Veneration, which causes your Hammer Wrath to heal 5 injured allies for 200% of damage done. Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Judgment Criticals reset the CD of Hammer Wrath and makes it useful regardless of target health. In order to refocus the talent tree to allow for this hybrid playstyle, we have to drop Tears Deliverance from row 9 as well as Boundless Salvation from row 10. This is just something I'm playing around with, but this build focuses on utilizing Flash of Light during Infusion of Light procs, which is a very powerful and mana cheap heal. Last change is to our last row capstone talent. We pick up Inflorescence of the Sunwell. This gives your Infusion of Light an extra charge, soups up your Greater Judgment by 50%, but more importantly, also reduces the mana cost of Flash of Light by 30% and generates more Holy Power. You can find this talent build in the description below. I'm also very curious about what talent builds you guys have been playing around with. Please let me know in the comments below. Moving on to stat priorities. Nothing has been set in stone yet, but if you are playing a Shockadin, the same stat priorities will likely remain in Season 3. That is, you want to have base crit of 34% so that you can use File of Corrupted Rage to get you to 40%. This is when Diminishing Return starts kicking in. Secondly, get your haste to 35% after which Diminishing Returns starts kicking in. After you have achieved the crit and haste levels you want, you want to dump as much secondary stat as possible into Versatility. It increases all your damage and healing done, as well as reduces damage taken. Mastery is as lackluster as ever, and is a stat you should be actively trying to get rid of as much as possible. Now if you're going all in on the caster build, there's an argument to be made that haste might still have some value above 35% in order to push out those casted heals faster. I don't think it'll be worth going too far above 35%, but we will see as the season progresses. You would likely have to sacrifice crit in order to achieve that, which in my opinion would be a mistake. There is also an argument to be made that Mastery has a higher value as a casted in, as you will be out of melee quite often, you can maneuver yourself to be closer to your raged companions, and make better use of the Mastery that way. Melee DPS in general have better survivability, and tanks straight up rarely need you as a healer at all, which is what makes your Mastery so lackluster to begin with. But if you're going to be spending more time standing next to that squishy Shadow Priest or Elemental Shaman, then perhaps Mastery can have some value. Let's talk quickly about our new tier set. Our 2 piece set bonus says that whenever Glimmer of Light dissipates or is refreshed, it creates a holy reverberation on its target to heal an ally or damage an enemy over 8 seconds. This hot slash dot stacks up to 6 times. Our 4 piece set bonus makes Daybreak into a 45 second CD, making it the same CD as Divine Toll. But it also provides us with a 25% haste buff for 6 seconds. This haste will pair very nicely with the Rising Sunlight talent, as well as the Divine Toll and Daybreak combo I discuss in the next section of the video. Overall, our 2 piece set bonus is very strong, and will be able to do a substantial amount of healing or damage if used correctly. Our 4 piece allows us to perfectly align Divine Toll and Daybreak, and also gives us a 25% haste buff every 25 seconds. Now let's think about that. Every 45 seconds we basically have a mini lust. That's pretty damn good. With the multitude of changes in the last 4 months to Holy Paladins, let's go over the basics of our gameplay and discuss some of our core abilities, utility kit, as well as a very strong combo all Holy Paladins should know how to perform. So how does one play a Holy Paladin? We operate under a resource generator and spender type of system with the added complexity of mana management. These are all the spells we have at our disposal that generates holy power. Judgment, one holy power. Holy shock, one holy power. Hammer of wrath, one holy power. Crusader strike, two holy power. And divine toll, five holy power. All of the holy power that you generate will need to be spent on something. Below are all the abilities we have at our disposal that uses Holy Power as a cost. Shield of the Righteous, 3 Holy Power. Light of Dawn, 3 Holy Power, should only be used in Raid. Word of Glory, 3 Holy Power. 
in general, you would want to use your Holy Power to do damage via Shield of Righteous, but in times when you need the extra spot healing, use it with Word of Glory. Keep in mind, Word of Glory is a single target heal, but it does also convert healing to your beacon targets. Speaking of beacon, you should be running the Beacon of Faith talent, and you'd be putting both of your beacons on squishier targets in your group. But what about all those CDs people keep talking about that we have that makes the class so intimidating to pick up and play? Well, let's make it easy and separate them into three broader categories. Number one, active healing CDs. Number two, utility CDs. And number three, oh shit, this is bad CDs. Our active healing CDs are the following. Holy Prism, an AoE heal or AoE damage ability that is on a 40 second cooldown should be used on CD for either healing or damage. This one requires a macro in order for you to be able to control if you want it as healing or damage. Targeting a friendly player with a spell does a single target heal, but sends out four beams dealing AoE damage to enemies. If you target an enemy with the spell, it will do single target damage, but send out four healing beams back to the group. This is the macro I'm using, and we'll also put it in the description below. Next up is Blessing a Sacrifice. It is placed on a friendly target and reduces their damage taken by 20% for 12 seconds, but you as the Paladin suffers 100% of the damage prevented. This damage cannot take you to less than 20% health. It should be used on tanks doing larger pulls or on friendlies you know was about to take a lot of damage that may not survive. Generally should be used on CD, but be careful to not waste it on trivial damage. The next one up is the Tears Deliverance and Hand of Divinity combo. Both of these are on a 1.5 minute CD and should be used together whenever possible. Tears will provide a nice hot on your party, as well as make them take increased healing from Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Holy Shock. Any use of these spells on the party member with the hot will extend the hot's duration. The instant Holy Lights that Hand of Divinity provides allows you to instantly increase the duration of the hot, and even better, if you can line up both of these spells when you know damage is coming out, you can actually get some use out of the Holy Light casts. However, even if there is no immediate damage going out, setting this up and using the Holy Light on a fully healed player is still okay to do. Last but not least is a Divine Toll and Daybreak combo. Divine Toll is an AoE heal or damage ability that applies a Glimmer to 5 targets it hits. When you combine this with Daybreak, which removes all of the Glimmers from all the targets affected by them, it creates one of the most potent healing or damage dealing combos we have, thanks to the new 2P set bonus. As mentioned before, our 2P set bonus says that whenever Glimmer of Light dissipates or is refreshed, it creates a holy reverberation on its target to heal an ally or damage an enemy over 8 seconds. So let's go over how to use this combo properly. First, make sure you have Glimmers out on your party members or enemies, then hit Daybreak. A few things will happen now. It will trigger the Rising Sunlight talent, which makes your next 3 Holy Shocks hit 2 additional times. It will also trigger your 2-piece for the first time, and reverberate out damage or healing. Now immediately cast Divine Toll, which puts out 5 new Glimmers on your designated targets, and you now have those extra Holy Shocks from Step 1 to dish out, which will refresh those Glimmers, triggering your 2-piece every time they hit. This will quickly stack up to 6 and do a tremendous amount of healing or damage. In order to properly do this, you will need to use a mouse over macro for Divine Toll to make sure you can use it properly on enemies or friendlies. This is the one I'm using. I'm also going to put it in the description. That is it for active healing CDs, which is by far the most complicated group. Of note though, it is 6 CDs in total, but 4 of which are used for combos. If you treat those spells as a combo ability, then it becomes much less daunting. Moving on to our utility CDs. Let's start off with our enemy control spells. And those are Rebuke, which is our Interrupt, Hammer of Justice, our Stun, as well as Blinding Light, our AoE Disorient. These spells are all quite self-explanatory and should be utilized at opportune moments in your runs. Our Blessings is where our utility really shines. Blessing a Sacrifice I put in our active healing CDs as it's on a short CD and should be used frequently. But let's start off with our big boy, Blessing of Protection. This makes a party member immune to all physical damage for the next 10 seconds. Please note, this only applies to physical damage. Putting this on a party member that is about to die to anything but physical damage does absolutely nothing. 
A good time to use it might be if a DPS or yourself have aggro for some reason and is about to die. Or when there's an enemy mechanic that focuses a specific friendly player. I'm thinking the claw fighters in Brackenhide that would chase players and straight up murder them if they catch you. Next up is Blessing of Freedom, which when casted on a player removes all moving impairing effects from them and makes them immune to any new movement impairing effects for 8 seconds. Turn Evil is also a utility CD I would throw in here just because it's helpful on incorporeal weeks. Not the best one out there as it's a casted ability, but it's the one spell we have to deal with it. Beware. Some DPS players will say that we as Holy Paladins should spec out of Blinding Light and into Repentance so we can solo the incorporeal affix. To them, I say GTFO. Never ever spec into Repentance. It's bad enough that Turn Evil has a cast time, but if someone even so much as utters the word Repentance in your vicinity, it's time to reconsider the group you are in. Not to mention that practically every DPS spec in the game and many tanks have instant cast spells that can take care of this affix at little to no cost to them. They should be happy you are doing one of them to begin with. Last but not least is our oh shit CDs, which we only really have one to be honest with you, and that is Aura Mastery. This is on a 3 minute CD and empowers your chosen aura significantly. Since you will always be running Devotion Aura, hitting Aura Mastery will increase the damage reduction effect to 15%. A very powerful CD for all PvE content. That is it for this Holy Paladin Season 3 M Plus Guide. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I love making informative content like this for new players and veterans alike, and I have much more planned for Season 3. I hope you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel to stay up to date. Thank you for watching.